You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host and frequent flyer. Paul Engel, <laughs> library director. Good to see you, Paul. Good to see you, Mark. Um, Paul is the library director, but he's pinch hitting. That's right. <laughs> right? Is that the right word? For um, Jason, Jason Baptiste. Baptiste, who's involved with Phil Hosaurus, mm -hmm. who is the poetry guru for yeah. Brockton, for lack of a better term. And the, the library, along with Phil's group, mm -hmm. is doing this great event. Yeah. Voices of Diversity, Voices of America. Yep. Where better could you do that than in Brockton? Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Okay. And you were telling me that there's going to be 18 different languages involved in this from there's how many different poets? We have right now we have 21 different poets okay. and they'll be representing as you said 18 different languages. So they're going to recite their poem first in their native language and then they're going to recite it in English. And some of them are going to get pretty creative from what I understand. They'll be coming at uh, doing different types of performances with their poetry. So I'm really looking forward to the event. So we're Friday the 2nd of November. Friday, November 2nd. It's two. at night. Now, normally people are used to the library closing at 5. Right. The doors are going to open at? Doors will open at 6. Okay. And the event will start promptly at 6.30. Okay. And there's a lot of poets. I, a lot of poets. Of all ages, right? Yep. I think the youngest poet is a Brockton High student uh, who's 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And our oldest poet is a woman who I believe is coming up from somewhere in Connecticut. And she's 86 years old. Wow. I know. So it's never too early to start and nope. never too late to, to finish. That's right. Okay. And, um, and we have, a, uh, I believe you are the MC for the event. Yeah, well. I was honored by Phil yeah. and I think might have been at your suggestion to, <laughs> to, to MC it because, I mean, we've really, the library, especially under your direction, We've really made it a community center. Mm -hmm. We have, I mean, the poetry series has been going for a long time. Right. But it's just getting bigger and better and more people are being drawn to it. Um, poetry years ago was like, you know, okay, we have books on poetry in the library. Check one out. Right. Now it's live and in person. Well, for me, poetry has to be experienced in person. You know, I, uh, I'm a very auditory person and uh, I have to hear a poet or a poem spoken to me in order to really understand it. I mean, I was very impressed when he partnered with the Brain Injury Association yeah. and we had people that created art and poetry and mm -hmm. everything. And that was a very impressive program. This one looks like it's going to rival that. I can tell you from what he's been sending me emails. Uh -huh. I got all the bios of yep. all the poets and all the information. Very thorough, very prepared. It's all in them. It's all being done on a voluntary basis. That's it's right. Not, there's no paid staff doing this. You. Yeah. I'm a volunteer as a, a library trust, mm -hmm. trustee. Um, you, you're paid, but this is more like on your own time. Right. You're, going away. you're going away on a vacation and you're coming back and two days later, <laughs> yeah. you're in, yep. tag, right? <laughs> I'll be present, but <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> but this, this, is, this is good because um, if you think about nowadays in the day of MCAST and standardized testing and stuff like that, that the kids have to do their English language arts Mm -hmm. And it's very rigid. It doesn't yep. allow for a lot of other expression, even, you know, with all of the classes they have to take, you know, it's kind of teaching towards the test. So poetry is an extension of that, just like right. art is mm -hmm. and music yep. and all of that. Uh, you know, you hear all about STEM. We're doing all sorts of fabulous things, That's as right. we know. Yeah. But the A that belongs in STEM to make it STEAM with the arts, yep. this is arts. Yes, and, and you know I'm a big arts guy. and. I want to get that. I want to get us to to be speaking STEAM instead of STEM. So we're going to have a packed house. I hope so. I hope okay. we get a lot of people in there. It's a Friday night. Yep. We don't know the football schedule yet, but that's nope. a different audience. Uh, they, in, in November, <laughs> they go to either a Friday night game or a Saturday game. We uh, never know because we're in a, a league. Um, so I'm hoping the game's on Saturday that week because I want to bring my staff to record this, mm -hmm. my team, but I don't want. Um, I, 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 I don't want the interference. <laughs> There'll always be other football games. This is kind of a once in a lifetime, I think. Yeah, this is, this is a really special occasion. So what else do you have to tell me that I may not have asked you? Well, let me put my glasses on because well, I can't good. see. Okay. Uh, we talked about uh, 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 that you're emceeing the event, uh, mm -hmm. that Jason Baptiste is the creative director. He's, he's been working closely with Philip Asaurus. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we have poets from... 
uh, Brandeis, Massasoit, Bunker Hill Community College, Boston Architectural College, Endicott College. We have local poets. Uh, Joseph Polycape is one of them. He's one of our trustees. trustees right? yeah. uh, we have um, poets from Cape Cod to Newburyport are coming up uh, to Brockton to celebrate this uh, event with us. So I think this might be year one kickoff. Um, yeah. Knowing Phil, when something mm -hmm. goes well, he builds on the success. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think this is going to be a great event and a real successful event. Well, look, at thanks for doing what you do, sharing. Um, we have three more minutes, believe three it or not. Three more minutes, wow. So um, any broad library events that you can recollect, okay? I, I don't know about you, but if I don't write them down and I don't have them in front of me, <laughs> they're, not, they're, they're not there. But um, maybe a bigger event, maybe thinking down the road. Well, we can talk about STEM week. The yeah, let's, STEM let's talk week, about STEM week, sure. Uh, Pat Monteith uh, is, is working very closely with organizations around the city. To, to put on a, a week of STEM, and, and it really starts with Governor Baker. He has the Governor STEM Week, and through that we're going to be doing programming around, uh, we're actually going to kick off our LSTA grant, Brockton Kids Can Code, that week for the young kids, uh, ages or grades uh, one through five. We're going to have uh, uh, science and, and, and uh, uh, things around our maker space are going to be happening that week. Also, we're going to have a, a career fair, and we're hoping that we can get the governor down or somebody from the governor's office down to visit during that that uh, that uh, uh, a career fair. So that would be really fascinating if we could. And, and Pat's doing an awful lot of work around it. I will be out of town; I won't be able to attend. But um, I'm looking forward to um, any coverage that you can provide, so I can catch up on it later. We're bringing Pat on to do a segment at Greater Brockton. Good. And also, it's the 23rd and the 24th right, of October. Right. There are two different nights with different ages. Mm -hmm. um, the makerspace is going strong. I was at a yeah. meeting today of my Rotary Club in Bridgewater, and I guess the gentleman who's involved with uh, the lady who spoke, Kelsey Keefe, um, they run the same computer store in the mm -hmm. center of Bridgewater, and they're very involved in Brockton. They mentioned the project this morning. Oh, nice. And uh, I was telling my fellow Rotarians that a Bridgewater library trustees, that they can do it too. They just need to find mm -hmm. the space in the library. Because right. we had a dead room right. that was sitting there that needed repair. It needed a paint job. It needed everything. And prior to getting there, Keith Choquette, mm -hmm. who was our assistant director, our acting director, and others got a grant to make it a maker space, and it's a busy space, it and it's, it's 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 pretty, it's pretty full. Yes, with people and with stuff. Stuff, and it's expanding, and their hours are expanding, and it's so a, yes, it's growing. And nice. the coding that's taking place, it's all good. Yeah. So BrocktonPublicLibrary.org, mm -hmm. and 508-580-7890. Right. Right, okay, I know that by heart because I've been <laughs> dialing that number for And I even know how to do it on, yeah, I, I can do it on a dial or I can do it on a push button. Nowadays, you, it's just in my phone and I hit a button. So it's not even imaginative. But um, look, we got all sorts of things going up. When you come back from mm -hmm. vacation after you recover, we will have you back on. I in, look forward to it. In the month of November. Yeah. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Always. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.